Hey guys, Carlo Filippo in here, your muscle chef, ready to talk to you about this guy, the chicken pound. What do we do with the chicken pound? We prepare grilled chicken in different flavors, six to be exact. If you're serious about bodybuilding and you meal prep, don't go anywhere else. This is the company for you. RX Television on RxMuscle.com. This is Ask Dave, better known as Hashtag Ask Dave. I'm your host, Sadiq Faruqi. This is your 30-minute question and answer show with Dave Palumbo. All your questions on diet, training, supplementation, IFB pros, competitions, of course, everything and everything going on in the world right now as we now bring in Dave Palumbo. Dave, a couple of big things going on. One, obviously, we send our very best wishes to Greg Valentino. We've had him on a couple of episodes with After Hours, and you had him on for a one-on-one -on -one update with his uh, throat surgery. Obviously, Greg battling tonsil cancer, so you want to touch on that. And then also, big news from the IFBB world yesterday, the New York Pro, which was supposed to be the first show back from the, uh, the postponement window, has been pushed to August, August 8th, for the New York Pro. Yeah, right off the bat, uh, yeah, the moving the New York Pro is a, is a sign that probably a lot of shows are going to be pushed back. I'm sure Steve got a jump on everything you know, and said, you know what, let me, let me take care of this first so I get my date. And so that seems to be going to be, I have a feeling we're not going to see too many shows before probably the 1st of July, if we're lucky at this point. I would love to see them June 1st. I don't think we're going to see anything in May. Uh, it doesn't look reasonable at this point. But we're going to keep going week by week. You know, at this point, we, that's all we can do. You know, we, there's no way to make a prediction. I have all my guys and girls continuing to diet as if everything is a go. And that's what you have to do. Because if someone, if everything kind of clears and they're like, all right, let's go. Yeah. You know, you got to be ready. You know, and this is a good, and as, as a bodybuilder or someone who's competing, this is a good advantage you're getting over other people. Because a lot of people just have given up. And I don't know why they have, but they just, they just kind of threw their hands up. So if you're in, ready to go and they hold that show, you could get a pro card, you know, because you might have less competition to go against. So I think it's, a, it's an advantage for people who are very mentally strong and focused in this time. Greg is doing much better. Um, if any of you guys have watched the shows, you know, his voice is still a little raspy, but I think he's going to make a full, you know, uh, a full recovery. He had no lymph node involvement, which means that the stuff, the cancer had not spread. They cut it all out. They think they got it all. And so that it, the prognosis is looking good. He had that one little setback because he was bleeding in his throat and he had to go to the hospital and they had to kind of, you know, re-suture it up. But I think he's going to make a very good uh, recovery now. So we're, we're loving that. And uh, I love the fact that he was tough enough after, you know, that, that crazy fiasco he had in the hospital to come on the show and then do the show. So that just shows what a tough guy he is, you know. He's pissed off because he can't go to the gym. He has a gym in his I think he has a gym <laughs> in his house. So he can't work out, obviously, because he doesn't want to start the bleeding again. But... You know, that's the kind of mindset you have to have if you want to succeed in bodybuilding. So, again, Greg Valentino, one-on-one -on -one update video, that, as well as his appearance on After Hours, also with Jimmy the Bull and John Romano, right now at RxMuscle.com and the Rx Muscle YouTube channel. Uh, Dave, sort of the, one of the big themes over the last few weeks has been boosting immunity uh, for obvious reasons with the world fighting the virus um, and it's made people a lot more aware of their immunity and how to go about right. increasing it. Well, our friends at Titan Medical have a new product to address uh, boosting immunity. If you want to tell the fans a little bit more about it. Yeah, you know, um, I, for most people, they're going to they're gonna go and they're going to get the V-mineralized to get their chelated zinc. They're going to go get diatonic water or buy some quinine pills, and they're going to use that to help get the zinc into the cells. And we, as we, we've talked about before, zinc-quinine combination inhibits the virus from replicating, which allows your immune system to kind of eat it up. Now, uh, if you were to go to the doctor because you had an active case of, of uh, coronavirus, what they're, they're prescribing is they're prescribing... Uh, 
uh, chloroquine, which is a prescription version of, of quinine, and they're giving you azithromycin or ZPAC. It's an antibiotic that seems to work in combination really well to inhibit, once again, the, the virus from replicating. So very similar effect, but you can do it, you know, you're on your own. Titan took it one step further. They actually have an injectable version of the uh, of vitamin C, which is, you know, they've shown is also, you know, we know that vitamin C is very potent against viruses. Injectable form of vitamin C is even more potent than the oral form because what happens with the oral form is you get diarrhea if you take too much of it. So you could take a you could take a thousand milligram shot of vitamin C, which is way more potent than taking a thousand milligram oral pill. So that's an advantage, and in, I, I believe that they also have the zinc in there. The zinc is in there as well. So they have a couple new formulas you could take a look at at the site. I'm going to do a complete video review uh, of the of the immune system stimulators that they do offer. Obviously. I think the most important one is glutathione injections. And they actually have a, a product where they actually have the glutathione and the vitamin C together. So the key right now, for, especially for the people who don't have the virus, is keep your immune system healthy so that if you get the virus, you get a very mild case of it. And, that, and that's what we're trying to, I'm trying to educate people about. You don't have to just kind of lay down and, uh, you know, and, and just take it you know, and, and die from it. I know this. I saw this one video. This guy, he was like, he couldn't understand why he was on his deathbed. And oh, this this doctor saved me. He told me to take this vitamin. The guy wasn't doing anything. He was doing nothing. He was eating a shitty diet. He wasn't exercising. He wasn't taking any nutritional supplements whatsoever. And then he wonders why he got nailed with this virus and it like, whacked him so bad. The guy actually recovered because he listened to this doctor who told him, you know, exactly what we're talking about. Get on these vitamins. Get on zinc. Get on, you know. Uh, um, they, I think he even used the nebulizer, but he had it so bad his, his lungs were probably seizing up already. If you catch, if you have a good immune system, it'll never get to that point. I know people have had it and they've recovered fine from it and that's because they're healthy and they take care of themselves. So you got to be ready for it. Titan's got some great formulas. The, the awesome thing about Titan is you don't have to go there in person. You call them up. Uh, you can do a little, you know, um, consult with their doctor via Skype and you're good to go. You don't need to get blood work to get these vitamin modalities. Now, if you want to get hormone replacement from them, like testosterone and stuff like that, then you have to do, they got to send you for blood work and you got to go get the blood work. But not for these immune system stimulators. So guys, check it out. Go to their website uh, and check out, you know, exactly what they have to offer. Once again, these new formulas, I will do a complete review of them so you know exactly what's in them and which ones you might want to get. Let's go to the question. The first two questions, of course, from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. The first question, Dave, with everything going on, I know you said to not cut back food, but would it warrant lowering carbs and increasing fats? No, because you know what? The, the truth is that this is this is really the truth. If you're if you're working out at home, you're probably not have enough weights to do what you would normally do in the gym. So you're probably doing a lot more volume type stuff. A lot, you know, if you're doing push-ups, you're not doing sets of four reps, you know, you, you're doing, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe 50 push-ups per set, right? So you're burning probably a lot more carbs, you know, doing that kind of training because, you're, you know, you're utilizing carbs when you're doing this. So you probably need more food, you know, if you're at home doing, you know, extended workouts like that. Likewise, you know, your body still needs to recover. If you limit in an off-season scenario where you're trying to add muscle or at least maintain muscle during this period, okay, if you don't eat enough carbs to fuel the processes that you're, or all the stuff you're doing during the day, then guess what? Your body's going to use the protein you're eating and turn that into energy. And we don't want that because then you don't have, then you don't have enough protein to re recover and, and allow your body to rebuild and uh, you know, repair itself. Because remember, even if though you're home and you're not doing the weights you were doing in the gym, you're still breaking down muscle tissue. You still got to recover. Okay, you still have a constant state of turnover and high, en and high protein demand. And remember, your immune system is made up of, of protein. Protein is, is what all the immune system uh, cells are made from. So if you don't eat enough protein, you're, you're depriving your immune system of what it needs. So this is not the time to be restricting foods severely. Now, if you're dieting for a competition, different story, okay? Different story. But if you're trying to sustain and gain muscle, you definitely don't want to restrict. Second question, again, from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. David, what MGF test do you start to see your clients start to see elevated side effects? I'm looking to maximize my progress without suffering any side effects from test replacement. 
you know, if you, anytime you take a drug, you can get side effects from it, okay? You know, 100 to 200 milligrams per week is like a physiological range. It's a little, probably the 200 mark is a little higher, but um, you don't really get too many side effects. But if you've never taken it before, okay, and you tend to aromatize, convert, in other words, convert testosterone to estrogen at a high rate, or convert testosterone to DHT at a high rate, you might get some side effects, you know, you, even, even at 200 milligrams a week. Now, obviously, as you amp up the dosage, 400, 500, 600 milligrams a week, you're gonna have a much higher conversion. That's why when you do the HRT, you know, levels anywhere from two to 400 milligrams per week, if you take a product like Mytestalize, that will limit the amount of DHT production you have and it will help flush some of the extra estrogen out of your body without, without flatlining those, those hormones because you don't want to knock those things completely down because then you, then you don't grow well. So for the, the lower dosages, Testalize can handle it. As you get over 500 milligrams, you know, four or 500 milligrams a week, okay, now you're going to start looking into taking an aromatase inhibitor as well because you got to block that enzyme that converts testosterone into estrogen because you have such a high amount of testosterone around, it's a much greater chance of it aromatizing now. Uh, so it is what it is. Everyone's different. You have to kind of go by trial and error. You know, if you're not looking for side effects, stay around 200 milligrams a week, but you're not going to get the maximum gains from that. So it's, it's always a matter of do you want, if you want maximum gains, you have to deal and handle the side effects. If you don't, then you stick with your HRT levels. Let's go to our Instagram questions. Again, if you're not following us, our handle is official underscore RX muscle. Good one to start here, Dave. It's from Clash with Paul. Now, to give some context behind this question, um, Dexter Jackson just did an interview with Patrick Bet David, and one of the points that he mentioned was about Sean Ray, and he said, quote, that I would smoke him. So the question is, who do you think in their prime, Sean Ray, Dexter Jackson, who's coming out on top? You know, it's a, it's a tough uh, comparison because when Dexter was competing against Sean, when Sean was at his best, Dexter was still hadn't gotten to his best yet. So, it's a, it, once again, it's very hard to make that comparison. Sean Ray was very deceptive on stage. He was not nearly as big as Dexter. Uh, I, 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 I saw the Dexter Jackson interview, by the way. I thought, actually, I got to say, I was going to text Dexter. I thought it was a really good interview. I think Dexter really gave a very honest, uh, good interview and he answered the questions really well. But having said that, I, I think that, you know, even though Sean was only about 200, 210 pounds around there and Dexter was competing in the, in the 230s and they're about the same height, I think that Sean had a level of just flow to his body that was better than Dexter's. Uh, his, his tie-ins and insertions are better. Dexter's conditioning was f without a doubt, you know, better than Sean's, but not that much better. Sean Really, you know, John had tried to glutes back in the day. He, you know, he was pretty complete from head to toe. There really wasn't any weaknesses that he had in his body other than the fact that he always looked, he didn't really gain much weight from year to year. He kind of looked the same every time he competed. But that same was really good. So would Dexter have beaten Sean or Sean beaten Dexter? I think it would have mattered on what day they both showed up at because I've seen Dexter look phenomenal on certain shows. And then other shows, he was good, but he wasn't his best. And same goes with Sean. There were shows where Sean just nailed it and he was just phenomenal. And then other shows where he was good, but maybe he just wasn't as dry or as, or, or, or as crispy as he could have been. So I think on any given day, both of them in their prime could have beat the other one, depending on who showed up. Now, if they both absolutely showed up at their ultimate best, that would have been a contest I would have loved to see. And I don't, I don't know who would have won. Um, I, I, I think I might have given the edge to Sean just because of I like the flow of his body better. But... Once again, I'm a conditioning guy, and Dexter has that in spades. Let's go to Swalbrum O'Neill. Interesting one here. Your thoughts on Clen usage while either preventing or recovering from a mild case of the current virus in respect to his respiratory effects? It, can, it certainly can't hurt because it opens up the airway, so you're going to have more, better oxygen exchange. The problem is that the, the virus really doesn't affect the opening of the airways. It affects at the level of oxygen exchange. So in other words, you have your, your trachea, okay, here, that goes down into your bronchial tubes, and those, those tubes branch off into the lungs. And then in the lungs, you have the little air sacs. They're called alveoli. That's where all the fibrosis and congestion is occurring around those, the exchange of oxygen. So clenbuterol really wouldn't affect that because it kind of just opens the bronchial tubes up. So you'll get more air into the lungs but I don't necessarily know if you're going to get a better oxygen exchange. I would assume you would, 
because if you get more air means better, you know, better chance that you're, you're absorbing the oxygen, but it can't hurt. I think it, it can only help probably. Uh, Jenny Polk, when you competed and started dieting, did you cut the McDonald's meals first or change them to cleaner meals? Do you happen to remember the lowest calories you had to drop your food intake to? In the beginning, I would say the first 75% of my career, I didn't eat McDonald's when I would diet, except if it was a cheat meal, you know, and I decided to go there. But I never ate McDonald's. Uh, for the, the last 25% of my career, like the last like maybe three years or four years of my career, for some reason my metabolism was so insane at that point because I had so much muscle, okay, that I was actually eating McDonald's once a day throughout the diet, okay, because if I didn't, I just, I just would, I would wither away. I almost needed that extra, uh, that extra like junk calories to kind of, con it kind of put my metabolism at bay. It slowed it down a little bit. But early on, I, I asked, I'd done some pretty low carb diets, you know, to get myself as lean as possible. And I probably didn't need to do it. I, and this is good because Dexter said this too. Dexter said I used to cheat my whole, the whole first part of my career. I always cheated on my diet. And I always was in great shape. And then as I got older. He goes, I started realizing that, you know what, I can be in great shape, but I can even be in better shape than that. And that's what I realized. I didn't structurally have a great structure compared to some of these genetically gifted guys. So what I realized was, even though my conditioning may have been better than theirs, okay, it still wasn't good enough to compensate for their genetic gifts, structurally speaking. So I would have to get even crazier lean so that people would just say, oh my God, this guy is just shrink wrapped from head to toe. We got to give it to him. And that, and that, that's how I beat a lot of these guys. I would beat these guys on, on conditioning. And I, and in order to do that, you have to suffer. So I went some, I did some pretty low carb diets. I always kept my protein really high though. And another thing to remember is that I, I used to have these guys backstage would come up to me and say, hey Dave, uh, can you help me? You know, I, I want you to diet me for, for the next show. And I'm like, guy, I'm competing against you. I'm like, I'm not going to diet you so that you beat me. I said, once I retire, I'll work with you. No problem. No problem. I said, because I knew these guys would beat me if, if I got them in shape. So having said that, conditioning is something that will a lot of times eclipse structure. Okay. If you have the structure too, like Dexter and the conditioning, that's why he was so deadly on stage. Um, where is he? Johnny, no, the life of Lucas rather. Uh, we talked about earlier the New York Pro being pushed to August, and it's brought the question that a lot of people have been asking over the last few weeks, and that is about the Olympia. If not canceled, uh, can you see a scenario in which the Mr. Olympia would be held in mid-September or be delayed to, say, October or November? Is that a possibility given the fact that Vegas venues are so locked throughout the course of the year? Look, this is what I think they should do. If it gets to a point where... It doesn't look like they're going to allow big groupings of people, okay? I don't think they should cancel the Olympia. I think they should give out 15 invites to whoever to, to the top 15 people. If the if the competitors want to do it, they'll do it. If they if they don't, they don't. Of 15 people, you'll probably get 12 12 on stage, right? You don't have to hold it in Vegas. You find a, a venue. If Jake Wood wants to build one from scratch with made of zinc, it's made of copper, so that there's no, no virus can live on it. We could do that. Whatever you want, set up an amazing camera you know, setup, live stream the thing, charge 10 bucks ahead, $9.99, to watch the thing, and you hold the Mr. Olympia. Uh, no crowd, just judges, you know, the expediters, and your competitors. And at least we get to see the Olympia. And at least it gets to be Olympia. You can charge supplement companies money to sponsor the live stream. You don't have to have one company. You, have, you, you sell commercials on there, like a, like a regular TV show. And we do it that way. This way, we don't have to cancel this, you know, the season. and We don't have to cancel the biggest event of the season. Even if maybe some of these other shows don't take place, you can do that. I, I, I think that would be the, the, the best thing to do, rather than just say, hey, we're going to cancel the Olympia, or we're going to move it to December. You know, because... Then you're moving into already getting into the Arnold time for next year. I think that that would be a solution. Now, obviously, if everything kind of loosens up a little and, and, and July 1st, everyone's like, all right, back to work. The gyms are open again. We're going to, you know, we're going to, we're, we're going to, we beat this thing, you know, so to speak. Well, we at least slowed it down. Then fine. But if we get to a point where it's getting down to the wire where they got to make that decision, hey, do we end this thing or not? Do, I think they should do it. I think they just have to have a different business model 
about how they're gonna sell this year's event. Otherwise, they're gonna to have to just cancel it. We're not gonna have bodybuilding. That, to me, is not a solution. Let's go to a bull duck. SEO on calves, does it work and can it look good? If so, which product would you recommend? Look, I, I never, I always admitted right off the bat, I, I didn't have great calves. I had very ripped calves. I had uh, very vascular calves and separated calves. I didn't, and I ha- but I have high calves. And I had such big legs that my calves were always behind me. I used um, the Chris Clark synthesized product on my calves probably for 10 years, you know. I didn't overdo it. I did it a, a little bit. I have a protocol that I give out to people if you want to email me for it. And I found that it worked really well. It, it, you know, it's a, it leaves you a little sore down there. Like, you yeah, had a tough, rough workout. But you know what? It helped me. And I know a lot of competitors use it. I'm not going to say who, obviously, but if you use it right, you don't even know the person's using it. It just kind of gives you a little bit of an edge without looking ridiculous. And that's the the truth of the matter. Most most guys who don't have genetically gifted calves have to use some kind of enhancement. I like the Chris Clark product. I also like the Painless Pumps product. uh, And I sell those both on DavePalumba.com because I really believe in those products. But they work. You know, they work if they're applied correctly, not abused okay and i think that's what people are so used to seeing these abuse cases online of these retarded guys down in south america injecting motor oil into their into their uh, body parts that they think that's what the, that's what this site enhancement stuff does it's not true and a lot of the site enhancement oil on the market is just oil that they put in a bottle and that's not what you want you want a, a legitimate product there are two legitimate products out there and one is chris clark synthesized he's the one who invented the product and then painless pumps is also a legitimate product and uh, that's why I only sell those two. But, you know, that's a personal decision people have to make. Not sure if we've ever asked this or if you've been asked this uh, in a private forum, but Anthony Brack wants to know, do you get offended that people use the term, quote, Palumboism to call out when somebody has a gut? You know, to tell you the truth, and I know this sounds like a, a very, it, it's really an enlightened look on life, and it's very, it took me a long time to get to this place, but I don't give a shit what people say about me. It, nothing bothers me anymore, to be honest with you. The only time things bother me is when people put out science that's not correct, and might even, and drag my name into it somehow, like, oh, Dave said this, this is bullshit, he doesn't know what he's talking about. That's when I go crazy and I do these rants, because I, I, I like to educate people, and I don't, and I hate when people spread bad science. You can make fun of me all you want. I, I make fun of myself. You know, I, I, I wish I had a great head of hair like Jay Cutler. <laughs> I don't. So I make fun of my hair. I, there's, there's nothing that you could say to me that will bother me, okay? Because I, I don't give a shit. It doesn't matter to me. So I know it, it sounds like almost like too good to be true, but when you hit a certain age, you just don't give a shit anymore. You feel confident in what you can do. I know what I'm putting out there is, is good. I know that the, the nutritional products I put out there are very sound and, and are of the highest quality. I feel good about what I do on a daily basis. I'm not trying to scam anyone, con anyone. I don't care if people buy my products or not. But I know that what I'm putting out there and I know the information that I put out there is top notch and is science based and is about the truth. And that's why I that's why our coin our, our slogan for RX Muscle is the truth in bodybuilding. Because I believe in telling the truth whether you want to hear it or not. And you know, while I might not be, you know, I might not do some of the crazy stuff that like the Boston Lloyds and the Dr. Tony Huges do, because I think that's kind of a, a little irresponsible. You know, even though it's about their truth, and that's fine. Um, you know, if someone wants to name something after me, and because because they think I looked a certain way, who cares? You know, <laughs> you know what the funny thing is? I I, I always give Big Lenny as a, as a good example. Big people make more people make fun of Big Lenny, and then than any other person out there. And you know what, Big Lenny's got one of the most popular social media followings of all time. So who's getting the last laugh? He's making money off of it. You gotta just understand and not take yourself so seriously. If you don't give a crap about what people think about you, it gives no, it takes the life out of it. It doesn't, no one even cares anymore. No, they don't keep, but if you are always getting pissed off, and remember when uh, Phil Heath was going crazy when people were arguing about his gut and all this stuff, and he was, and he was arguing with people on social media, the reason why that there was any energy or why that had any life is because he was he was entertaining it. He should have just ignored it and not said anything and said, ha ha, you're right, yeah. And that would have been the end of it. It would have ended it. So, no, I, it doesn't bother me whatsoever because people 
people do that all the time. I mean, look at kids, they make fun of each other all the time. It's the kids that don't let it bother them or make fun of themselves that neutralize instantly. The best guy out there who neutralizes negative comments, Greg Valentino. Think about what people made fun of his arms and this and that. He, mock, he mocks himself more than anyone else out there. So how could you make fun of the guy? He's making fun of himself more than everyone else is. And that's a great attitude to have because it neutralizes exactly what people are trying to do to you. Let's go to Jack Connor, IFBB Pro. Is a TRT dose every eight to 10 days enough to protect gains through these troubled times before hitting it hard again when the gyms open back up? Also, is testolized worth using while on this dose? Here's my suggestion. Rather than take, let's say you're taking 150 uh, milligrams of testosterone every eight days, eight to 10 days or whatever he said, take half of that every four days. I don't know why, don't, don't go eight days. That's a long, eight to 10 days, that's a long, you know, amount of time. So I would do it half as much every, you know, four days. Okay, I think you'll get better distribution of your levels. And absolutely, I have all my all my people, and I'm always advocating Tesla's. It's a great uh, supplement to take. It's good to take while you're on on a, a stack, but especially when you're off, because it kind of balances your testosterone, DHT, and estrogen without bottoming the DHT and estrogen out too much. And that's what you want. You want to kind of skew everything in favor of testosterone and in and, and, and disfavor of estrogen and DHT. And when you're on a lower dose of, of like a hormone replacement dose, that supplement works really, really well to do that. Even if you're not taking any hormone replacement and you're just natural, it works really, really well because in our bodies, there's this balance and everyone produces different amounts of testosterone, uh, estrogen, and DHT because some people aromatize more estrogen, some people convert more um, using 5-alpha reductase, more testosterone to DHT, and that's why some people lose hair, some people have prostate issues, some people have gynecomastia, some people have water retention in their ass, because it depends on what your body's natural hormone systems do. We can influence these hormone systems and, 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 and skew them in favor of what we want as bodybuilders by taking a testolized because that's what I designed it to do. Not necessarily as a test booster, but as a testosterone optimizer to optimize testosterone and de-optimize, if that's even a word, estrogen and DHT. Or deprioritize. Let's, Let's go to Excellent 187. Dave, for supplements like creatine, which I was taking pre and post workout, how, I guess creatine and other classes of supplements that you would take pre and post workout, uh, how would you advise people taking them or not taking them during this lockdown? Keep taking them. What's, I mean, what does creatine do? It volumizes the muscle. You get a better pump. Um, if you're doing any kind of endurance athletics, you're going to have better endurance because it, it buffers ATP in, in the cell. Keep doing it. Look, what I've been telling people, especially my clients, don't, don't change anything. Don't change anything. The only thing that's going to change is your ability to work out. I have some guys that have a you know, that bought equipment and they built their own home gyms, you know, in, in, in two days because they, it's important for them to have weights and all this and that. If you're not one of these guys, you don't have access to it, or maybe you live in an apartment in Manhattan and, you, and you're st stuck in there, guess what? You're going to be doing pull-ups, push-ups. People are like, oh, I don't, I, I can't buy, there's no pull-up bars left. I can't do pull-up bars. I used to grab, this is no joke. You know how you have doorways with the little metal frame around it? I used to put my fingers on the metal frame even a wood frame, and I would do pull-ups for my fingers, tips, pulling my whole body weight up. You know how strong I got from doing that? That's how I started. So there's no excuse. There is no excuse. You can do every exercise. You know, put your girlfriend or your, boy, your boyfriend, if you're a strong girl, on your back and squat with them on your back. Whatever you got to do, get it done. I'm telling you, you, talk to Cedric McMillan. He's made his own equipment before. He'll, he can, he'll innovate. He should make a whole line of home equipment right now and tell you how to do it. Like a D, he should do like a channel on DIY, do it yourself, how to build your own exercise equipment at home from like, you could chop down, start chop down trees. You can cut your own wood. You can make your own uh, equipment right there. There's no excuse. I'm telling you, I know I have a client of mine who went to, and I'm trying to actually a friend of mine, he went to Home Depot. He bought buckets, okay, that he filled with cement, okay, and he bought a long, I don't even know what he used as a pole, he bought some kind of long pole, and he put the buckets over the pole and he's bench pressing it every single day. You got, you got to make it work, that's all there is to it. Don't cry about it, just get it done. Um, we've gotten this question in various forms before, it's about legs in terms of, you know, once you get older, in terms of losing your legs and the ability to gain them back. 
from Philip Pot Geeter. Um, as you get closer to 50 years old, we seem to not be able to build decent legs anymore. If there's some kind of solution, I'm 48, and at that problem when all, I guess when gyms go back to normal, what he plans to do is do a cycle with Tans D-Ball, which he's never done before, to see if a break in training and a new supplement regime, or a regimen rather, uh, can help a shock for the legs. What would you say, A, in general, to that idea? And then I guess what your uh, idea is as far as losing legs and the ability to gain them back as you get older. Well, if you've lost the muscle just because you haven't been training in a gym, I mean, I'm sure that, you know, doing a cycle, just even just training in general, going back to the gym is going to bring them back. But if your legs have just got progressively smaller as you've gotten older, my theory now is I, it keeps evolving, my theory. So every time you hear me talk about it, it'll be different. I think as we get older, our spines get compressed. That's why we shrink in size. And those nerve roots that come out of the spine start to get compressed. So I think they're not, what happens is most of those nerve roots in the lower spine are going to the legs, right? I think that they're not firing 100%. So you're not getting the muscles, they're not getting innervated as well as they were when they were younger. So now you can't activate all those fibers the way you did when you were younger. And so I think you get atrophy because the, remember, it's the nervous system that are stimulating the muscles that keep them big. If you have less stimulation because the, the nerve roots are maybe being pinched off even a little bit, you're going to lose some leg size. And I think that's what happens progressively as we get older is we get less and less firing. Now, I don't know how to solve that problem. I don't know how to maybe do, you know, hang from vertical, you know, gravity boots. I don't know, to try to stretch your spine out. I don't know what the solution is. I just have seen it in people. As they've gotten older, it's just harder to maintain leggedness. Now, if you have good legs and you never stopped training them and you, and you, and you didn't have any injuries, I think you can maintain those, that muscle mass a lot better. Like, Dax just never really stopped. So I don't think that, and that's why his legs really are not any smaller than they were when he was competing. I think they're, maybe they're even a little bigger. But they're probably about the same size, and that's because he just never stopped. If he would have stopped training and downsized them again and then tried to get them back, he might have, a, he might have had a, a problem doing that. But my, if I didn't tear my one quad back in 2012, my left quad was, was my other leg, my good leg, stayed big for a long time and I wasn't even doing anything, you know? So, because um, I have a lot of muscle mass there. So the key is that, you know, is not to stop. The problem is people get injuries and, and, and stuff like that happens and then as we get older, it's just harder to bring back that mass. Will a cycle help? Yeah, of course it will. But if, you're, if you've been cycling all along, Probably taking more drugs is not going to make the legs any bigger if, they're not, if they haven't gotten bigger from a regular cycle already. Time for a couple of more questions. One from Alexander Jaramazov. Fruit. Is fruit a good source of carbs or is it better, I guess for bodybuilding perspective, uh, to stick mostly with rice and potatoes? You know, I wouldn't use fruit as my exclusive source of carbs. I, I don't think it's a necessarily a bad thing in the off-season to have a couple pieces of fruit here and there. Um, you know, fruit sugar, though. I mean, so you're getting a, you know, you're, you're not getting a nice, uh, smooth, I guess you could say, response of absorbing blood sugar and getting a nice, even insulin response like you would from eating, like, say, brown rice and pasta and potatoes, which require di digestion and then absorption over a longer period of time. Fruit, kind of, because it's just sugar, it goes into the bloodstream, depending on what kind of fruit, if it's fructose, it's going to go right to the liver and get stored. You're not going to get much of an insulin response, but if it's if it's glucose, you know, like grapes and stuff like that, you're going to get you know a, a huge insulin spike, and it's going to get absorbed very quickly. Um, so much more likely to get stored as fat, especially if you're trying to diet and stuff like that. But I like a more gradual increase so that your your blood sugar levels are stable, you know, a stable or high stable throughout the day. So. If you're going to have fruit, I would mix it in with, with, with starchy carbs as well. I wouldn't just have only fruit. Plus, if you eat too much fruit, you're going to wind up getting diarrhea from it because there's a lot of fiber in there. And it's not the soluble fiber. It's, it's the insoluble fiber, which if you eat, if you, oh, look, after shows, I, I'm a fruit maniac because I'm so thirsty and dehydrated. I would eat like, like get fruit bowls from room service when I, whatever hotel I was in. I would eat so much of it, I, I was like pooping my brains out for like two days from it. You can't eat too much. So once again, in moderation, I think fruit's fine. Let's go to Aaron Brooknailer. Best chest exercise I can do with some 30-pound dumbbells and no bench. Uh, best chest exercise with 30 pounds. Um, obviously, flies you could probably do, which would, you know, whenever you come away from your body, you're not as strong. So that would obviously, with a 30-pound dumbbell, would be something you can do. Probably, even for me, who's, who's not lifting very heavy, 30 pounds is kind of a little light, you know. 
Uh, obviously, you can do curls. You can do tricep overheads. Chest is a little harder um, because of the fact that, you know, it, it's just not a lot of weight. You know, you're probably better off doing push-ups with someone sitting on your back. I mean, really, to be honest with you. Um, but I would still go through the movements. I would still do, I would just, I would just do super strict, like, you know, incline presses uh, with your elbows out. And really, just really, just concentrate on working that um, upper pec region, keeping those dumbbells close to your body when you're pushing them up like this. And that's the best you can do. I would continue to look, and I tell people this all the time, Amazon Marketplace, Okay, you go, excuse, not Amazon, excuse me, sorry, Facebook Marketplace. If you go to Facebook Marketplace and your location is already in your profile, it'll show you within a 10 or 20 mile radius around your house who's selling exercise equipment. And I know down here, I picked up all my dumbbells just from people who were selling them trying to clean their garage out. And now especially, because a lot of people just want to, they don't have anything to do, they're home all day, they're cleaning their stuff out, they want to get rid of stuff they got left over. I have an entertainment center from New York, all solid oak white. Like, not white, it's like a bleach white oak. I'm ready to give it away. I just want to get out of my garage. So look on, I'm telling you, Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, you will find dumbbells. You might find one 50 pound here and another 50 pound there and a 45 here and a pair of, you know, 60s here. Who cares? Just start looking, calling people up, you know, or Facebooking them. and. There's nothing to do now. Go pick up dumbbells, you know. Make your own home gym. I can't tell you how many clients I have who've built their own home gym. And, and when they first started out, they were so depressed. I'm like, look, go out there and see what's available. And before you know it, they got a bunch of equipment. They got really for pennies on the dollar. And they're training in their shed, in their garage, in their basement, wherever. At least they got exercise equipment. I wish, I, you know, I was supposed to buy a leg extension, leg curl machine. They kind of did both. Uh, before all this happened, I'm like, ah, I don't know if I really need it. Uh, I should have bought the piece because then I would have been able to do it with my legs. You know, I would have been able to at least train those. I can train my upper body because I have a, a cable crossover and a set up in my house, and I also have a um, some dumbbells. But if I would have had that one leg piece, I would have been all set. That's going to do for this episode of Ask Dave. A reminder right now at rxmuscle.com, the one-on-one -on -one with Greg Valentino a couple of days after his. Throat surgery he gives us the full update on everything that took place in the hospital. Obviously, you know, he posted a pretty harrowing story on his Instagram. That after hours. And then, of course, we have Lee Preets coming up this week. Now, we have some cool new things that we're planning over the next few days and the next few weeks. Of course, everybody being in lockdown, we all got stories to tell. And we're going to try to bring them out uh, from around the bodybuilding community. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a cool project that we're working on. So keep an eye out for it on rxmuscles.com and then, of course, on our Instagram page. For Dave Palumbo and our producer, Tyler Shore, I'm Sadiq Faruqi. We'll see you next time.